We have uh, claimed the, uh, the, the, the metaphor, the image of men as stewards because in the God story, uh, humanity is introduced in the God story as steward. Uh, God creates everything that is created. Human beings are created. Man, Adam, is put in the garden to tend it and to take care of it. And from that point on, uh, everything that the man receives is gift. Doesn't earn it, doesn't do anything to, act, to make it or create it, doesn't own it, but receives it as gift, is responsible for it, and responsible to God for what happens to whatever has been entrusted to it. So we've talked about creation, we've talked about uh, our wives, we've talked about our children, we've talked about friendships, uh, we have talked about uh, ourselves, and now we're going to talk about probably the greatest treasure that we have, and that is the treasure of the gospel, being good stewards of the gospel. Uh, throughout the New Testament, you will hear Paul talk about uh, the, the gospel being entrusted. Uh, this is something that is placed in your care, and you are to tend it and care for it and protect it and make sure that it is not changed or poisoned. Uh, and the earliest sto story we have of his conversion, uh, which is 1 Corinthians 15, here's what Paul said. It's the famous uh, resurrection. Now, brothers, I want to make clear to you, brothers and sisters, the gospel that I preach to you and which you received on which you've taken your stand and by which you're now being saved if you hold to the message I preach to you unless you have believed in vain. Okay? What came to me, I gave to you exactly. In the New Testament studies, they call it the kerygma. It is the basic sermon outline that Paul uses, that Peter uses. Anytime you see a sermon in the New Testament, it is based on the same outline. I passed on to you as of most importance... What I received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve, and then to more than 500 brothers and sisters, many of whom were still alive, but some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, as to one born untimely, uh, it is a C-section, that's the language. Someone ripped from the womb. Uh, and someone born in an untimely fashion at the wrong time. Uh, he also appeared to me. Timothy was his son in the ministry. And at the end of his first letter to Timothy, he ends his letter with this. Guard what has been entrusted to to you, avoid irreverent and empty speech, which is most social media, and contradictions which are falsely called knowledge, and that's the rest of social media. By professing it, some people have departed from the faith. Grace be to you. Uh, stay away, he warns Timothy all the time, stay away from uh, worthless arguments that even if you win the argument, you haven't won anything, you haven't proven anything. And there were all kind of theological word games that people would want to play. Um, and so Timothy was told to stay away from those kind of senseless uh, waste of time and energy. But he was to guard what had been entrusted to him. Paul says, the mystery that has been hidden from people from the beginning of time has now been revealed to us. And that is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The best news that the world has ever heard, will ever hear, has now been entrusted to us. So what does it mean to be a steward of the gospel? Well, the first thing is, as a steward, we recognize that the gospel is gift. Um... We didn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. Adam didn't earn creation, didn't have anything to do with it. It was given to him. The gospel is given to us. But as we receive the gift, 
then we are responsible to make sure that we do not contaminate it, that you do not weaken it. Weaken it. There are all kinds of pseudo-gospels being preached. Okay? Now, who is responsible if I preach heresy on Sunday? Me. I'm responsible. It's my message. Who else is responsible? You are. You ought to be able to catch it. You ought to be able to challenge me if I do something foolish or if I get away from the text of Scripture. You are responsible for what you hear and what you do with it. Okay, you can't walk out of here and say, hey, the preacher did it and that's why, that's why I believed it. Nah, -uh. you are always responsible for what you have. So you are responsible for making sure that you pass it along in a pure fashion. A lot of the gospels we have will leave off one end of the gospel. That's usually the, 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 the failure. Uh, a lot of gospels preach all the good news, but will not take sin seriously, okay? Or they take sin too seriously, and they leave off the good news. I mean, I'm, I'm being, you know, real quick and real broad in my stroking there, but that, that's usually kind of what happens. The compromise contaminates the message, and what you end up with is a gospel that will not help. A gospel that will not help. So it is imperative that you know the gospel. How do you do that? One, you study the scriptures. We literally have men who died, women who died, to make sure you had a copy of God's word that you could read in your own language. And you have what people for generations never were able to get hold of. And not only was it not in their language, but books cost too much. <coughs> now, uh, the books relatively, the Bibles uh, are, um, are relatively inexpensive. Uh, we, we, you can pick up a, good, a very good Bible for, for, for very few dollars. And you can get less than that if you order it digitally, which I don't. Yeah, you need to have a digital copy of scriptures uh, so you can read it on your phone and that kind of stuff. But um, studies are showing that if you spend time studying with the paper, you do, you do a lot better with memory and, um, uh, and um, recall and all that. So you're going to study the Word. Uh, the word for study in, in the Bible is chew on. Uh, it is the cow chewing its cud. It is chewing it so that you get every bit of taste, every bit of nutri uh, nutrient, everything out of it. Okay? Everything out of it. You chew and you chew and you chew. Uh, what does, what does um, the world teach about meditation? You empty your brain. What does the scripture teach about meditation? You fill your mind with God's Word. That's what you meditate on. You don't meditate on nothing. You meditate on God's Word. So when somebody says it's the same thing, folks, it's not. Okay? It is not the same thing. Now, uh, good news is once you're given permission at work or at school to meditate, they can't control what you meditate on. You can. So you do that. So here's the question. Here are your table questions. When did the gospel first appear to you? When were you first entrusted with the gospel? What contaminants do you have to guard against? What is, uh, which way do you easily flow? Do you easily go the judgment route? hold everybody over hell like a marshmallow, or are you uh, so full of grace that you become an enabler? Okay? Gospel holds both intention. And here is your homework. 
pass along the pure gospel. Stewards of all that God has entrusted to us, and the greatest gift of all is that he has entrusted the gospel to us. So, those are your table questions, and I'll give you the table time. Let's pray together. May we be good stewards with this priceless gift called the gospel that you have given to us. May we pass it along even as we received it. Pure, without contamination, in all of its life-giving form. And we pray this in your name. Amen.